In this video, we'll talk about epistasis. Now, before we actually take uh, the two types of epistatic genes, that is dominant epistasis and uh, the recessive epistasis, we need to understand what exactly is meant by epistasis. Epistasis actually means sitting over. That means we are talking of two genes which are located at different loci and one out of these two genes is dominating <coughs> dominating or is epistatic and the other gene gets dominated or gets suppressed that is known as hypostatic gene so if we just draw these chromosomes to understand it slightly in a better manner we are drawing two homologous pairs say here is a gene one is dominant other is recessive and here is also a gene one is dominant one is recessive now this gene and this gene they are located on two different chromosomes or on the same chromosome, even if they are located, they would be at different loci. And we are saying that this gene dominates over this gene. So the one which dominates is known as epistatic gene and the one which gets dominated is the hypostatic gene. Now, if the epistatic gene, epistatic gene, is dominating in its dominant form then we will call it dominant epistasis and if it dominates in its recessive form then it is known as recessive epistasis in both the cases this gene is the epistatic gene or if we talk of these a's this is the epistatic gene. That means if, if we are talking of dominant epistasis, that means if one A is capital or dominant, it will not let the B express itself. That means dominant epistatic form is dominating the uh, hypostatic genes. Sometimes if it is lowercase, that is recessive A's, then also it does not let the expression of this B takes place. This becomes the epistatic gene. But it is dominating the B or we can say that it is not letting this B express itself even in its recessive form. So it is epistatic but in its recessive form. So epistasis is also of two types that is dominant and recessive. We'll talk about dominant epistasis first. So, to understand this dominant epistasis, we will take the example of Cucurbita pepo. We are talking of dominant epistasis. The example that we take is of Cucurbita pepo, which is commonly known as some summer squash. Here, there are two genes which we are talking of. An epistatic gene, which is represented by W. And as we are talking of dominant epistasis, it is the capital W or the dominant allele which will dominate the hypostatic gene. And the hypostatic gene is Y. Before we plot the cross, let us take situations. If capital W and small w is there and capital Y and small y is there. That means as long as capital W is there, which produces white flowers or responsible for production of white flowers. And yellow is responsible for production of yellow flowers. That means... As long as capital W is there, this Y will not be able to express itself. 
that means this epistatic gene is controlling the hypostatic gene in its dominant form now if the situation is two capital w's and two capital y's then also this y will not be able to express itself if we say there are lowercase w's or recessive w's and capital y's now will this y be able to express itself the answer is yes because this y was hypostatic and the epistatic gene was controlling it in its dominant form so wherever there is w we will not see the expression of y take place so let us take the cross between a white and a yellow flower and let us see what type of flowers are produced so we are talking of white crossed with yellow here y w's are capital both are dominant here only y is dominant there is recessive w so it is not epistatic in its recessive form this is parent generation in f1 the gametes produced by this plant would be capital w with small y all four are going to be same type and here small w with capital y all four are going to be of the same type so if we plot the punit square we get all offsprings by putting these gametes here capital w small y capital w small y capital w and small y and here small w capital y small w capital y small w capital y and one more small w capital y the genotype of these offsprings will be capital w and a small w from here capital y and a small y from here we started with white crossed with yellow white crossed with yellow what would be the color of the flower produced by this plant there is a gene for white and there is a gene for y also but this y will not be able to express because the epistatic gene is present in its dominant form so this is going to be white that means all 16 offsprings are going to be white let us take another cross of the f1 members f1 members were capital and small w capital y and small y crossing with capital w small and capital y small y. the gametes produced will be capital w with capital y capital w with small y small w with big y and small w with small y both the parents would produce the same type of gametes Let us write down the gametes produced by the other plant. Same, four gametes would be produced here also. Capital W, capital Y. Capital W, small y. Small W, capital Y. And small W, and small y. Let us fill up these boxes in the punit square. Capital W, capital W, Y and Y capital w capital w y and small y capital w small w capital y and oh sorry both y's are capital here big w small w capital y and small y here capital w two y and small y capital w capital w y and y here one capital one small y also one capital one small and in this case capital w small and y's are all small in this case capital w small capital y small sorry both y's are capital here capital w small 
Y is capital N, small here, small W, small W, both the Y's are capital here, small W, small W and one Y capital, one recessive. In this case, capital W, small W, capital Y and small Y, capital W, small W, small Y and small Y. Here W's are lowercase or small, one Y is capital, one is recessive and here all four are going to be recessive. Now we want to see the color of the flower which would be produced by these offspring. Remember Y is epistatic and sorry W is epistatic and Y is hypostatic as long as W is capital, that means any one W is capital, it will not let Y express itself. So, when there are two capital W's, there is no scope where Y can express itself. So, this is going to be white. Here also W is capital, so white. This one, white, white. Here, white, 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 white. We have to just check for capital W. Wherever we find W capital, it's going to be white because even if there are Y's present, it will not let this Y, which is a hypostatic gene expect. Here, there is no capital W, so it's not going to be white. Same here, this will be white and this will be white. So, let us count how many whites are we going to get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, and 12. We are going to get 12 white. Now let us talk about the remaining ones. This one, for example, has recessive W's and there is a dominant Y. And as we said, the W is an epistatic gene only in its dominant form. So as there is no dominant allele, this Y will be able to express itself. So this will be yellow. Same is going to be the case in this, this one also. The recessive W's are there and the Y is dominant. So this one will also be yellow. And same is going to be with this one also. So we will get three yellow. That means three plants will produce yellow flowers. And there is only one where all the alleles are in their recessive form. The W is also recessive and the Y is also recessive. Here, it neither produces white nor yellow. This one is going to be green. So, the ratio in case of dominant epistasis is going to be 12 is to 3 is to 1. And we are talking of phenotype ratio. And this ratio is a modified form of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, which is a typical Mendelian dihybrid phenotype ratio. These two have combined to give the same effect. If you remember, we talked of dihybrid grass and we said these nine have both the genes dominant. These three have one dominant, other recessive. These three have the other one dominant and the previous one recessive and this one has all four recessive. So when there are W's and Y's dominant, the color was white. In other three, W is dominant. So if W is dominant, even if there is Y present, it will be the same color that is white. So these two have given the same effect. So in dominant epistasis, which we understand using the example of Cucurbita pepo or summer squash, the phenotype ratio is 12 is to 3 is to 1. And the dominant uh, gene is the epistatic one here. That means in case of W and Y, W is epistatic, but it is epistatic only in its dominant form. So this is dominant epistasis and the ratio is 12 is to 3 is to 1.